Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss some elementary theories on initial value problems for ordinary differential equations. In this lecture we will be discussing about Lipschitz condition. Initial value problems. Initial value problems are a differential equations along with an initial condition. That is a differential equation along with an initial condition is called an initial value problem. A first order initial value problem has this form dy by dt equal to some f of t comma y along with y of uh, some t naught equal to y naught where t naught and y naught are constants. Here the independent variable is t and dependent variable is y. For example dy by dt is equal to 2ty along with y of t0 that is y of 0 equal to y. So this is an example for an initial value problem. So a solution of an initial value problem is actually a relation connecting the independent variable t and dependent variable y that satisfies this differential equation and uh, this initial condition also that is if y equal to y of t is a solution of this initial value problem that, that means that uh, this function satisfies this in a differential equation and also uh, it satisfies this y of 0 equal to 1 this condition y of 0 equal to 1 that means this uh, y uh, that is this this curve should pass through the point 0 comma 1 when x equals 0 or when t equals 0 we have y equal to 1 so that means the curve should pass through the point 0 comma 1. So that is the initial value problem. Now we are going to study some elementary theory of uh, initial value problems. Actually differential equations are used to model the problems in science and engineering that involves the change of some variables with respect to the another. That is what is we are using this de derivative dy by dt. So uh, many problems in engineering and science can be converted into uh, differential equations. So, uh, to solve uh, many problems uh, uh, from uh, science and engineering, uh, we can uh, convert that into uh, differential equations and solve the differential equation. Most of such problems require the solutions uh, of an initial value problem. That is, uh, most of such problems will contain uh, an initial condition also. So, in uh, a common real life situations, the differential equation that models the problem is too complicated to solve exactly. That is, if you are trying to convert a real life problem uh, into a differential equation or an initial value problem, uh, the problem may be too complicated to solve. That is, it is not, sometimes it is not easy to solve directly that differential equation. Commonly, we are using two approaches uh, to approximate such solutions. One approach is to uh, modify the problem by simplifying the differential equation to one equation that can be solved exactly and then use the solution of the simplified equation to approximate the solution to your original problem. That is, uh, suppose we have a problem 1 that is uh, a differential equation which is obtained uh, by modeling the uh, real, life real life situation. Now to solve this, one approach is actually to convert this into uh, uh, another differential equation which is uh, a simplified model okay so uh, and uh, instead of solving this first equation we are first solving the second one and uh, and the solution of that equation will approximate the uh, solution of the first one so actually it is to change the uh, complicated differential equation into a simple, simple uh, differential equation and solve that second problem now the second approach is actually uh, uses the uh, approximation of the solution or, or, or of the original problem that is our problem is the first one so you, we, we are trying to approximate the solution of this problem that is the second approach that is we are finding the approximate solution of the uh, initial value problem that is what is we are discussing in this uh, module. This method of approximation is most commonly used technique uh, because uh, it, it gives the uh, more accurate results and uh, realistic error information. So, so, so before entering to this uh, uh, approximation uh, of initial value problems, 
uh, we have we, we need some definitions and results from the theory of ordinary differential equations first we can discuss a definition a function f of ty is set to satisfy a Lipschitz condition in the variable y y is the second variable f is a function of t and y t and y are variables uh, y is the second variable and uh, this function f is set to satisfy a Lipschitz condition in the second variable y on a set d subset of r2 if a constant l greater than 0 exists with this condition that means the absolute value of f of ty1 minus f of ty2 is less than or equal to that l uh, into absolute value of y1 minus y2. If, if uh, such a constant l exists, then we can say that this function f of ty satisfies the Lipschitz condition and in that case l is called Lipschitz constant. That is the function f of ty is set to satisfy Lipschitz condition in the second variable y on a set d subset of r2 if for any two points ty1 and ty2 this condition holds that is absolute value of f of ty1 minus f of ty2 is less than or equal to some l into absolute value of y1 minus y2 if such a constant l greater than 0 exists then we can say that f satisfies Lipschitz condition in the second variable y okay that l is called Lipschitz constant for example, show that this function f of t y equal to t into absolute value of y satisfy Lipschitz condition on the interval d equal to uh, set of t set of all t y such that 1 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 and minus 3 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 4. So here uh, the set is actually uh, t varies from this is t axis and uh, this is y axis. So t varies from uh, 1 to 2, 1 to 2, yeah, let this be 1. So, t varies from 1 to 2 and y varies from minus 3 to 4. So, 1, 2, 3, this is minus 3 and this is 4. So, y varies from these two and x, uh, t varies from these two. So, this is this is d. Okay, this rectangle is d. So, we have to show that this function f of t y equal to a t into modulus of y uh, satisfies Lipschitz condition on this interval d. So, if you are taking two points uh, t y1 and t y2, uh, then we have absolute value of f of t y1 minus f of t y2 is nothing but absolute value of uh, f of t y is t into absolute value of y. So, this is f of uh, t y1 and this is f of t y2. So, this is equal to taking uh, modulus of t outside we get absolute value of t into uh, more absolute value of y1 minus absolute value of y2 that is the modulus of that value. So, uh, this is nothing but we know t varies from uh, 1 to 2 and y varies from minus 3 to 4. So, t varies from 1 to 2 means t is less than or equal to 2. So, we can write this as more t is less than or equal to more t into this is less than or equal to 2 into modulus of y1 minus y2. So, we have mod f of t comma y1 minus f of t comma y2 is less than or equal to 2 into mod y1 minus y2 that means we can we we can find a, an l equal to such that f of t, t y1 minus f of t y2 is less than or equal to l into y1 minus y2 so uh, by the previous definition we can say that f satisfies ellipsis condition on d in the variable y with Lipschitz constant is equal to 2. Next, we have another exam definition. Uh, a set D subset of R2 is said to be convex if whenever T1, Y1 and T2, Y2 belongs to D, then uh, the linear combination 1 minus lambda into T1 plus lambda T2, comma 1 minus lambda into Y1 plus lambda Y2 also belongs to D for every lambda in 0, 1. So, this is actually states uh, in geometrical terms that a set is convex provided that whenever two points belongs to that set, the entire straight line segment between that uh, the points also belongs to the set. That is, we can say that this is a convex set because if you are taking any two points in this set, then the line segment, the lines, entire line segment uh, for, uh, between that points will also 
belongs to that set so if you are taking any two points then uh, the line segment which also contain in which uh, belongs to this set so it's a convex set but this is not a convex set because if you are trying uh, taking these two points then uh, uh, the line segment belongs to this set itself but if you are taking uh, these two points uh, to if, if two such points uh, then uh, the line segment is is not belongs to is, is not completely belongs to uh, this set because uh, these portions of uh, the line segment is outside the uh, set so this is not a, a convex set so that is what is we discussed here this is actually uh, if these two points t1 by 1 and t2 by 2 belongs to this set then this is the line segment this is actually this line segment also belongs to d for every lambda belongs to 0 1 this is important lambda belongs to 0 1 that is 0 less than or equal to lambda less than or equal to 1 so suppose uh, this is uh, the point 1 minus lambda into t1 plus lambda into t2 uh, into uh, comma 1 minus lambda into y1 plus lambda into y2 so uh, where lambda varies from 0 to 1 so if you are taking lambda equal to 0 if you are taking lambda equal to 0 then what will we get from this we get uh, t1 y1 and t2 y2 belongs to d implies then 1 minus lambda t1 that is 1 minus 0 into t1 that is t1 itself plus lambda into t2 means it is 0 so t1 itself and here we have 1 minus lambda into y1 says so 1 minus lambda is 1 itself so y1 plus lambda into y2 lambda is 0 then t1 y1 that is this point if lambda equals 0 we get this point itself if lambda equal to 1 that is the uh, last point uh, of that interval so we will get if lambda equal to 1 then it is 0 1 minus lambda is 0 so this is 1 into t2 that is we will get t2 comma 1 minus lambda is again 0 so y1 is into 0 plus lambda into y2 that is 1 into y2 that is y2 so if lambda equal to 1 then we get the second point okay so and if lambda varies from 0 to 1 if uh, lambda varies from 0 to 1 this point will uh, moves from these to this that is what is we are taken uh, lambda belongs to 0 1 if you are not restricting this lambda uh, in this interval 0 1 then we will get a, a straight line passing through these two points so if, if you are restricting that lambda in 0 1 itself then we will get a line segment from t1 y1 to t2 y2 so this is the uh, definition of convex set that is convex set means that in geometrically we can say that if you are taking any uh, a set is said to be convex if you are taking any two points uh, uh, in that set then their linear combination or the line segment joining that two points also lies or belongs to uh, the set itself then we can say that it is a convex set otherwise it is a not convex set now we have a theorem suppose f of ty is a uh, is defined on a convex set d subset of uh, uh, r2 if a constant l greater than 0 exists with dou f by dou y is less than or equal to l that is dou f by dou y is bounded that is that that means uh, th this means that uh, dou f by dou y dou f by dou y is less than or equal to l means that minus l less than or equal to dou f by dou y less than or equal to l that is uh, dou f by dou y is bounded for all t comma y belongs to d then we can say that f satisfies a Lipschitz condition on d in the variable y with the Lipschitz constant this l so uh, to show that a function f of t y is uh, satisfies the Lipschitz condition alternatively we can use this theorem that is we, we, we need only to prove that modulus of dou f by dou y is less than or equal to some constant l that means a dou f by dou y dou y is uh, bounded if that the modulus of dou f by dou y is less than or equal to some l then we can say that this function uh, f of ty is uh, satisfies the Lipschitz condition with Lipschitz constant l in that convex set d i think we can continue the discussion in the next lecture thank you